1640s, uh, there are nearly 600 separate military clashes uh, which will eventually culminate in the abolition of the House of Lords, the established Church of England, and the Stuart monarchy itself. Uh, in the English Civil War, uh, the last great European war of religion, uh, England will witness conflict, invasion, and conquest, uh, and the privileged uh, and uh, monopolistic position of the Anglican Church of England uh, was officially abolished. The Puritans and other English Protestants will then become a well parts of various sects, uh, such as Baptists, uh, Congregationists, and even Quakers. Uh, the civil wars of 17th century England also involved Scotland and Ireland, uh, where political and religious revolution will be accompanied by social revolution uh, with an even greater intensity of violence uh, that will sadly leave scars on the land and the people that have yet, uh, centuries later, to fully heal. Now, in 1639-1640, uh, the invasions of England by a Scottish army, which is seeking religious concessions, uh, creates political deadlock in London. Uh, well, uh, paving the way for a rebellion uh, by Catholic Ireland in 1641. Uh, the struggle between Charles I and Parliament over control of the army uh, needed to crush the Irish insurrection provokes the outbreak of civil war in England. Uh, most of the north uh, and west of England and uh, much of Ireland will stand by the king. However, London, Scotland, not to mention the Royal Navy, will fight for Parliament uh, under the command of Oliver Cromwell, the leading general of the parliamentary forces. Now, Com Cromwell was first elected to Parliament in 1628, but King Charles I dissolves that Parliament and does not call another Parliament uh, for 11 years. Now, Cromwell, the soldier, the statesman, is a devout Calvinist. Uh, he will eventually become the so-called uh, Lord Protector of the Republican Commonwealth of England, the first chairman and council of state over the British Isles. Uh, King Charles I quickly loses control of the North, and the revolutionary forces led by Cromwell destroy his main field army at uh, Nasbe. Uh, Parliament has won the first round of the Civil War, but fails to secure a peace settlement, and the king manages to mobilize an army of disaffected Scots. Uh, Cromwell quickly defeats the Scots forces at Preston uh, in a three-day bloody battle uh, that happens on August 17th to August 20th, 1648. Cromwell's victorious army then takes control of Parliament uh, and determines to bring King Charles to account for all the bloodshed. Uh, Cromwell uh, puts the king on trial. Charles refuses to recognize the authority of the new regime, uh, and then Cromwell signs the king's death warrant. Uh, Charles I is then executed, beheaded by the new Puritan rulers of England. Uh, Cromwell, having pacified all of England, turns to the conquest of Ireland and Scotland. Uh, in Ireland, a Catholic confederation uh, controls uh, Irish affairs. Uh, and they had periodically aided King Charles. Uh, and the new boss, the Lord Protector of England, Cromwell, wants no chance of rekindling the cause in Ireland. Uh, so he massacres the combined forces of the Irish confederates and the remaining English loyalists at Drogheda. Uh, this is a very bloody battle. The Cromwellian conquest of Ireland then drags on for years, and Cromwell will kill roughly one-third of Ireland's population, showing no mercy whatsoever uh, to men, women, or children. 
Now, a third civil war then breaks out. Uh, the young Charles II, the son and heir of the executed king, uh, cobbles together an army uh, of English and Scottish royalists, uh, which prompts Cromwell to invade Scotland. Uh, and at the Battle of uh, Dunbar, uh, which happened September 5th, 1650, Cromwell manages to win control over most of Scotland. By the following year, Cromwell shatters the remaining Loyalist forces and officially ends the wars of the three kingdoms. Uh, the English religious conflict, the English Civil War, left some 35,000 parliamentarians and 50,000 loyalists dead. Uh, and, well, roughly 200,000 civilians died uh, from war-related malnutrition and diseases. Far more died in Scotland, and millions died in Ireland. Uh, the trial and execution of an anointed sovereign and the presence of martial law and a standing army shakes the very foundation of British society uh, and ultimately facilitated the restoration of the monarchy under Charles II in 1660. Uh, the Puritan victory uh, the Puritan victory in the English Civil War does not allow them the winning sign uh, well, to uh, dismantle or extirpate other religious and political views. And with the death of Oliver Cromwell, uh, the balance of the pendulum swings yet again. Uh, with the restoration of the monarchy, uh, well, this marks the defeat of the Puritans. Uh, religious pluralism is morally, politically, and law, uh, legally achieved under the Toleration Act legalized toleration in which the Church of England remains legally established and socially advantaged uh, while a counterculture of Protestant and Catholic dissenters uh, who are called nonconformists are allowed to exist uh, not only exist but thrive uh, they're tolerated uh, by the English Church as marginalized fragments but they're legally allowed to exist without persecution. And religious diversity becomes entrenched in the social fabric of England. Uh, during the Restoration, uh, a religious compromise is finally reached in Scotland, uh, where the bishops are restored as moderators, uh, and forms of worship are in fact devised by the exiles of the uh, mid-16th century, uh, these reforms are established. Uh, Scotland, however, will remain divided between English and Scottish models of the church, Presbyterianism and Episcopalism, Episcopalism. Uh, the Restoration uh, is also a type of breathing space uh, for the Irish Catholics after a century of serious aggression by England. Uh, the England... Uh, under the Restoration, take a rest and settle for what they have taken and do not seek to take any more. Uh, but the Irish are denied a political voice. Uh, they're also denied religious freedom. And the Catholic community will slowly begin to feel an even greater alienation. Uh, they are, in fact, uh, Ireland is, in fact, turned into an English colonial settlement community. Uh, the Irish become increasingly frustrated and angered. Uh, Restoration Ireland uh, was not exactly a happy place. Now, Charles II, uh, the son of uh, the uh, executed monarch, rules for 25 years. Uh, Charles II was a relaxed, self-indulgent uh, monarch, uh, and nothing at all like his father, the formal and stiff Charles I. Uh, Charles II is known as the Merry Monarch, uh, who has a love of pleasure uh, and also has many mistresses, uh, the most famous, of course, being Nell Gwynn. Uh, Nell Gwynn. Uh, the Breda Declaration uh, in May 1660 uh, proclaims Charles II the king 
and lifts the Puritan restrictions on entertainment. Uh, for example, uh, the Cromwell had banned all theater and plays uh, and all literature that was not religious and in nature, as well as all music that was not religious in nature. Uh, and after the fr uh, failure of Cromwell's political theocracy and the f futility of paper constitutionalism, uh, there is a dramatic reassertion of ancient historical rootedness uh, that acts as a type of coral reef. Uh, precedent, custom, and statute uh, will protect the rights and liberties of England far more than any alternative uh, solution ever could. Uh, Charles II starts his reign well. As I mentioned, he's uh, less rigid and more inclusive. Uh, and the king attempts to loosen the terms of membership in the Anglican Church of England. And he proposes a broad measure of religious toleration. Uh, but the king is faced by relentless pressure uh, and it, uh, escalating mistrust on all sides. Uh, so the king is forced to abandon his uh, innovative ideas. Uh, but Charles II returns again and again uh, to the fight for toleration, insisting that all Catholics and Protestant nonconformists uh, must be included in all legislation. Uh, but his ideals are defeated time and time again in Parliament. Parliament, the House of Lords, wants nothing less than a straightforward return to the old order. Uh, Parliament feels that England must be restored to health after 11 years of Puritan sickness. Uh, and, well, Parliament is fearful of any liberal innovations. Uh, Parliament wishes Charles II to be celebrated as a father, uh, celebrated as the Solomon, the Moses, the King David of the English people. Uh, but Charles is not as obsessed uh, with the mystique of the monarchy as Parliament is. Uh, his years of exile and hardship, uh, sheltering with and receiving help, uh, from ordinary people have transformed him into a rather down-to-earth figure. Uh, Charles II had, in fact, undergone the unusual royal experience of close engagement with his own subjects, uh, making him an often witty, affable, familiar, and sometimes vulgar king. Uh, as his reign progressed, uh, Charles II's court slowly descended into public displays of debauchery. Uh, there's a series of young mistresses uh, that were paraded scandalously around in public uh, and even represented on the coin of the realm uh, and uh, engraved sacrilegiously as Madonnas on sculptures. Uh, the vices of drink, whoring, and the pox were seen by the English public to be symptomatic of the political and religious ills uh, of corruption uh, in the English kingdom. Uh, the mystique of kingship becomes greatly dimmed uh, when the angel is, uh, well, the angel clothed in flesh, uh, the king, uh, begins to appear more fleshy than angelic. <laughs> now, there's a, a popish plot uh, that's well, pop, uh, possibly bo 